Um, so let's get into um, a lot of people know you for um, talking about Eidos mm. and Foundational mm. Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as I got in here, I'm seeing Foundational Americans in the house and all of this type of stuff. Let's yes. get into all of this. Yes. Um, yes. What is a foundational American? What's this whole Ados movement? Um, and 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 how is this? How is that not something that's kind of mm, divisive mm. amongst black people? in this country like like how do we decide who's who's who okay good question brother let's first decipher and break down what is and what's not um about lineage the adults thing that's some other shit. Mm. that's basically tone and yvette carnell that's their little lgbt organization that they try to flip the agenda for every other week. Every week it's about something else. That ain't got nothing to do with anything, but that's just tone and event shit. That's all okay. Adolf says. One week is this, the next week it's that. It changes up too much. It caused too much confusion. So that kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. That's why they don't have any followers right now. Mm. That's, that's an organization. They were going around telling people they're the leader of this organization. Right. So that's something else. That's some other shit right there. Okay, let's just be clear on that. I ain't got shit to do with that. That's some other some shit with some like LGBT. Black Lives Matter type of deal. Yeah, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's just like another v- version of Black Lives Matter. You say one thing and then you switch it up with something else. It's some sucker shit that ain't got nothing to do with anything. Now it looked like some Democratic shill shit, like they're trying to get people to get on the Democratic train. It's nothing. When we talk about what a foundation of Black American is, we're going back to the work of Claude Anderson, the legendary Dr. Claude Anderson. He talked about how native Black Americans, and he's Mm -hmm. talked about this for 40 years, are exceptional people, meaning that we are the only non-immigrants here, which is true. Native Black Americans, meaning Black people that were here before white people got here. Is Is that what we're calling native Black Americans? That's why we came up with Foundational Black Americans so that there wouldn't be any kind of confusion. But he meant by Native Black Americans, meaning the Black Americans who built the country. That's what he meant. Now, what you just said, that causes a lot of confusion and a lot of people had that confusion. When you would say Native Black American, people would think, are you talking about Native Americans like Indians? So that would cause confusion. So what I did, being a fan of Dr. Claude Anderson, being a student of Claude Anderson, I said, let me tweak his designation just a little bit better and call them foundational black Americans because over here in the North American continent, us foundational black Americans, we are the founders of the United States. There was no United States until foundational black Americans built it. So we are acknowledging our own designation. So that's not divisive because other groups do the same thing too. When people in the Caribbean, when they have Caribbean Day or, or Jamaican Day, they, they wave their flags and that's fine. You're from Jamaica, you're representing Jamaica. When people come from the African diaspora, they represent their flags, the Nigerian flag, the Ghanaian flag. We are foundational Black Americans. This is our home. People try to tell us that we, foundational Black Americans, we don't have a home. We're just some lost tribe wandering around somewhere. And that's not true. This is a nation that foundational Black Americans built from scratch. There are three things that make up foundational Black Americans. Number one, the Black people who were brought over in captivity. Number two, the Aboriginal Black people who were already here, according to the Spanish conquistadors, when they got here, they kept talking about all the Black people they saw here. And then number three, the black people who were the explorers who came and traded here way before Columbus, like Ibn Farouk, like Idrisi, like Al Mansudi, all of these Moorish explorers who came here and traded and left people here, left translators here. 
This makes up foundational black Americans. On the foundational black American flag, we have a date, 1526. This is when a Spanish explorer, Ion, brought over a hundred black people from Spain who were Moors, brought them here to the North Carolina, South Carolina area. Those black people rose up against the Spanish, amalgamated with the Aboriginal people here, and they blended in. So the first foreign people on this land to become permanent settlers were black people. So we settled this place way before white people in many instances. So that gives us a unique perspective on this land. A lot of people try to make slaves interchangeable only when it's politically feasible for them. I see a lot of people who will have a Jamaican flag up on their page and they'll tell us, well, you guys talking about your foundational black Americans. Hey, man, we all black. We all slaves. OK, we all black. We all slaves. Why are you designating yourself as a Jamaican? You designate yourself as a Jamaican because that's where your lineage is from. And there's no problem with that. Our lineage comes from here. And we're not interchangeable in a political sense because our ancestry goes here. When a black foundational black American person goes to a plantation here, we feel a little different about it our ancestral memories trigger a little different feeling about that. As if I go to somewhere in Jamaica, I might not feel the same way. I, I feel a camaraderie with them, but I might not feel the same ancestral memory as a, a person on a Jamaican plantation. Let me ask you something real quick. How does one know that they're a foundational American? You gotta go somewhere and feel it in your, in your, in your, in your ancestral memory? Or be, no, because no. because let me just let me just let me just say that I a few years back mm -hmm. did a um like an ancestral search not through um ancestry.com or nothing like this. This is a sister who actually, you know, tries to uh trace your lineage through documents and all of that type of stuff or whatever. Um so I had just did on my father's side, right? Um, but in, 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 in doing all of this, and I'm going to tell you it traced back to Guyana, right? Okay, right. But it's, a, it's about four generations back, right? So, so anyway, um, what I was going to say is during this study, I found that First of all, a lot of the, 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 the slave records were very poorly kept, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of, and a lot of the records, you know who owns most of the, of the records? You probably know this. You know who mo owns most of the slave records and documents? And this is why a lot of these companies like Ancestry.com exist, uh, their, 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 their bases are where they exist for this reason. The Mormons, brother. Mm -hmm. The Mormons bought up all the slave records and they're housing the shit. If you really want to go and find out a lot of this shit, you gotta go to Utah. You got you'll hit a you'll hit a, a road, you'll hit a brick wall at some point if you don't physically go to motherfucking Utah. So my thing is, how do these people even know? That they're these fan I, I, I feel like a lot of people are assuming that they're foundational Americans mm -hmm. just because, man, I mean, I, I grew up in the hood. Like, I grew up as a foundational American. I didn't know nothing about Guyana. Wasn't nobody talking with accents in my uh, family. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But I found out that my great great grandfather. Who was born in like 1880 something or whatever came through Ellis Island. But then once he was here, think about the time he was here, like like what part of, of building America too? You see what I'm saying? Because because when he got here, Jim Crow and all of that type of shit was in effect. He had to go through it. Our family had to go through that. Through the twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. So you telling me I can't be down with the foundational American shit because my great 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 Well, if we're talking about ultimately, now, now, break it down. 
let's break it down. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're talking about ultimately part of the foundation of Black American culture is getting a reparations claim, okay? Mm-hmm. That's very important. That's an important element. That's not the only thing, but that's an important element. Right. We can trace that my we can trace back who my family that. suffered from redlining and all that type of shit. That's because I know how you feel about like Jamaicans that come here right now, this generation, and able to get loans. My family didn't go through that. My family didn't get all that when they came here. We lived as regular black people. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. That would not, if they came over and they immigrated, because your family came from immigrants, they immigrated yes. over here. And you yep. can trust Ellis that. Island. Right. I know the boat. That's, that's, that's very different because you can't get a reparations claim like that. And it's very important to not mix it up but now keep in, keep in mind, this is just my father's side. I understand. I understand I have, that. We all have two sides now. My mother's side, I ain't traced that yet. That could go straight to a plantation for right. all I know. Right. So we got to look at, we got to take those things into account as well. My Both of my parents, mm-hmm. on both sides of the family, we can trace everything back to plantations in Alabama and North Carolina. So my family, 100% foundation of black Americans. Nobody right. in my family immigrated. How many we people cannot. can do that, though? Do you think? Um, we can. We, we can do that. Most How of us can. How many that are claiming to be can really do that? Keep it real. You can trace your family lineage at least back to 1870. You can trace your family back to the 1870 census. If you know your mama and you know your daddy, their name has been documented somewhere. You know where to trace them. Right. So A lot should- of them had just first names, though. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, I I physically, this is not no easy shit to do these traces. Like, I physically have been through this shit. Like, I've seen it. Like, I went down that rabbit hole for a second. And when you get to all that slavery type of shit, like, the records are not what you think. And, and like, people even change their names and shit like that because they because of education the spelling changed and all kind of shit or they added some some fancy shit to it there's outliers to it but generally it's pretty easy to trace your lineage back to slavery to a plantation or it's easy to trace your lineage back to at least the 1870 census the average person who can trace their lineage back to 1870 nine times out of ten you came from a slave plantation because they'll list you as a farm worker or, or domestic or something like that. So that means you came most likely from a slave plantation. And that's a little bit different from somebody who immigrated over because you wouldn't be eligible for a reparations claim. We can't open up that door. And this is for several reasons. If we start letting our African and Caribbean brothers start getting reparations based on the Jim Crow treatment, then what's going to happen? The damn white Hispanics are going to start saying, okay, well, damn it, I was mistreated too. And then it's going to undermine the reparations claim. We respect CARICOM over in the Caribbean. They have a reparations movement called CARICOM, where all the Caribbean nations are going to Britain and France and all of these other um, colonial powers to get their reparations. We're not included in that. We don't trip on that. That's fine. In Africa, they have the African Union, where all the African nations get together and they're trying to get tangibles for themselves. We're not included in that. But when we say we're going to do a movement for ourselves and say, hey, Foundation of Black Americans, we're going to try to get tangibles for ourselves. A lot of people want to say, "Okay, well, y'all being divisive now. No, we're doing the same thing as everybody else. We're getting tangibles for our group. We respect everybody else's tangibles and them fighting to get theirs. And people should respect ours. See, it just seems like, you know, Malcolm X said, you know, when, when when the white man is giving you hell, he's not looking and saying, yo, that's a Muslim or that's a Christian or that's a Buddhist. You know, he's not saying that's a Jamaican or that's an African or that's a foundational American. He's saying that's a nigga. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and I just feel like we need to come together as black people, you know what I mean, as much as possible. And it just feels like that type of thought and i understand where you're coming from with it but it feels like that type of thought helps to divide instead of bring us more together okay this is the problem lord jamal that division is caused by non-fba 
foundational black Americans, we have been the only, only, only people fighting for everybody. We fight to help everybody get here. Before the 1960s, brother, most immigrant groups who came over, they were riders. And we brought them over and helped get them over, even in the early 1900s. The NAACP and other Black people helped get Caribbeans over in the early 1900s, and then again in the 1960s. We knew, or we hoped, that if we help other Black people from the Caribbean and Africa get here, we would use them as reinforcements to help us fight white supremacy. And for a long time, they were doing that. Stokely Carmichael from Trinidad, Ryder, Marcus Garvey. He came up off foundational Black Americans. He was actually unsuccessful in Jamaica and the Caribbean. He failed Thanks. multiple times. He Thanks. came over here. We elevated Marcus Garvey. Um, Schomburg out there in New York, the Schomburg Center from mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, Ryder. We knew that some of our brothers and sisters, Malcolm X, his mother's from Grenada. Our brothers and sisters, your family, when they came over, they were black folks. They lived around foundational black Americans. The white supremacists figured something out after the 1960s when we started to get our brothers and sisters over here in large numbers. We really fought after the civil rights movement. The next thing that foundational black Americans did was get those immigration rights popping because they had those racial quotas. We said, no, we, we don't want those racial quotas. We want our brothers and sisters over here. And in the 60s, we start wearing dashikis. We started changing our names. We started showing, hey, this is a pan-African type of thing. We want to walk lockstep with our brothers and sisters. The problem was this. The white supremacists saw that. They said, we need to get in front of this. So we're going to let these niggas over. Let's go over there to some of these African and Caribbean countries and let's find some of the biggest coons we can find and we'll send those coons over there. See, they stopped sending their riders over here after a while. Mm. We stopped getting Stokely Carmichael and Marcus Garvey. We started getting Candace Owens <laughs> and folks like that. She's Caribbean. Mm. You did. We started, they started flooding us with goddamn coons. So now... When we start talking about getting tangibles, these coons jump up talking about hell. What about black on black crime? Why are y'all niggas doing all that crime? All oh, you Akatas, they got all types of fucked up names for us. And they have that division thing that we've been letting slide for a long time. And we're saying, hey, wait a minute, we're going to have to clean house now. We got a lot of folks over here from different places who don't view themselves as the same as us. They have a lot of tribal beefs in their home country, like in Nigeria right now. They're going through hell this very moment over there. It's the, the police and all that shit is going crazy over there. There's tribal beefs going on. And then they'll bring that shit over here with us and then undermine us. And in the Caribbean, let's go to the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, they have all types of racial colorism categories, especially in Jamaica where a person who looks black, but he ain't really black, he's Blanco, he's colored, he's Malak. They got all of these racial categories over there where they um, distribute resources based on how light or how dark you are. Over here, that person looked like a black person, but over there, that's a whole different thing. He's a whole person who's not even considered black over there. And then they send them over here, and then all of a sudden we're getting told to vote for Kamala because she looks black, so vote for her. And that woman don't think like us. That woman don't look black, think black, act black, and none of her policies are pro-black. So we have to look at the whole totality of everything. We're all brothers and sisters in the genetic struggle, but culturally, foundation of black Americans, we're just looking out for tangibles that we've been denied for so long because we've been trying to cape and ride everybody and help everybody. And if you're on an airplane and they say the plane is going down, the first person you help is yourself. Put that mask on yourself. We've been putting the, the, the air mask on every other group while we're dying. So we have to at least look at self-preservation before we can continue helping everybody else. So when you talk about reparations, what, what does that look like to you? In, in, a, oh. in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, what would reparations consist of for foundational black Americans? The same exact thing, the same way it looked for Native Americans, all these Native American tribes that they give cash money to, they give land allotments to, they tax give exemption. tax exemption, they give mm -hmm. casinos and money making endeavors that are tax free, um, free health care, all of that stuff. All of that stuff can be going right to us as well. Because a lot of these Native American groups that's getting this stuff, they had no bearing on the building of the government of the United States. They really didn't develop this country. Some of them 
were on the land, but a lot of the Native Americans that we have now are really $5 Indians. They're really fake Native Americans. It's a bunch of white folks yeah. who signed on the Dolls Rolls back in the early 1900s, paid $5 to get their name listed as Native American. So now they get all of these resources and benefits. So it's a hustle that's going on. So the tangibles, it starts off at 15 trillion. They got it. This is the United States. We built the wealth of this country. When they had the COVID thing and the COVID release, they started they popping up. money out their ass. They pulled it right out their ass overnight. So they got it. This is the this is the United States of America, man. We got cash on top of cash. And foundational Black Americans, we have a debt that's owed, and we need to get paid that debt. 